Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. My name is Matt and this is Imagine Then Make. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this wooden portable bookshelf. So here are the finished drawings for the portable bookshelf. I'm going to make one of these out of wood using these drawings. This first drawing shows the flaps open. This one shows the flaps closed and you can see the ends of the flaps stick out beyond the top and bottom piece. Here's the top. Here's the bottom. Here's a flap that marks where the pivot point is. Here's the top view of the flap. Now this drawing is uh, the, uh, an important drawing because it shows the top with the flaps installed. So the plan here is to start the project by cutting a length of board that's longer than this overall assembly. It measures at 19 and a half inches, so maybe I'll cut a board that's 20 and a half, maybe 21 inches. Then I'll go ahead and mark and cut out the flaps so they'll be a perfect fit. And then later on, I'll come back and trim the length of each flap and as well as the length of the top piece. So now that I've got the design figured out for my portable bookshelf, now I need to select the tools that I want to use to actually make the project. So at first I thought maybe I should just use manual tools. After all, when I built this workbench, I spent a considerable amount of time using this Japanese-style pole saw that I got from Harbor Freight. And because I've spent so much time using this saw, I've got a lot of practice with it and developed some confidence with it, and I know I could make straight cuts for this project using this saw. But what about the round cuts, the corner cuts, the cuts that go around the corners of both flaps? Well, for a manual tool, I could use a coping saw. But honestly, I don't have very much practice time with the coping saw at all. So I'm not so confident at this point that I could make some really good curved cuts using this tool. Now, I could stop and, and do a lot of practice with this saw, but i rather keep on keeping on and get with actually making the project and save, save the practice time with this saw for another time. So my next best choice would be to use the blade runner. So here are the two jigsaw blades I'm planning on using for this project. You can see that this one is quite a bit wider than this one. It's also longer. So I'll use this one when making the straight cuts and I'll use this one. This is also referred to as a scrolling blade, a scrolling jigsaw blade. I'll use this scrolling blade when making the curved cuts. I think that'll work out real well. And then to make the holes for the project, I could use these hole saws. I can either mount them in my electric drill or I could use a drill press. Maybe I'll do a couple of each just so you can see how that goes. So the wood that I'm going to make the project out of is commonly referred to as common board. Now common board comes in all different widths and lengths, but as far as I know, they're, it's all the same thickness. So this particular board that I have is known as a one by eight. Those are the nominal dimensions. So the thickness of the board, the one part, this actually measures three quarters of an inch. And the eight part represents the width, and this actually measures something less than seven and a half inches, so considerably less than eight inches. And this particular board is a little over six feet tall. Now, like I said, they come in different widths, and they come in different lengths. And it's fairly, fairly inexpensive. I paid about $11 at the big box store for this piece of wood. So I think this, this piece of wood and cutting it with the blade runner will work out pretty well. 
but I do, I do, can't imagine my having a problem right away. So that problem is because this board is quite a bit longer than my Blade Runner table is wide. So there'll be some challenges supporting that end of the board as I'm sliding it through the blade. So what I've decided to do is to go ahead and mark up my first cut lines. So let's call this, this first board will be for the top and then the next board will be for the bottom. So I'll deliberately put the cut lines a little bit long. So instead of being 19 and a half inches, I'll go 20 and a half, maybe 21 inches, which is right about here. And then for the bottom piece, I'll go about the same length, which should be right around here. So draw a couple of cut lines and then come back to my trusty pull saw and make those first two cuts using my manual tool. That way I can take these two shorter pieces and make all the finished cuts on the Blade Runner. I think that will make it a lot easier. So that's the plan. Next step is to go ahead and lay out those first two cut lines and then start cutting.
So now that I've got the holes drilled in the top piece for the four screws, the pivot points for the flaps, I just decided to kind of dry fit everything and clamp it to my bench so it doesn't move around. And then with the flaps standing straight up, I just used a manual screwdriver and drove each of the four screws in partially just to mark where on the flaps I should drill some pilot holes so that when the screw is driven in all the way, I'm not going to split the wood here. So I have that done. The other thing I wanted to do is test fit how these flaps are going to close. So the number one side seems to fit pretty well. The number two side, though, the flap is a little tall, so I'll have to do some sanding which is fine, no problem. And it's probably real difficult to see on the camera with the angle, but this flap seems like it's standing up at a 90 degree angle. This one is a little bit short. It's exaggerated, it's like that. So that means I'm gonna to need to sand the bottom piece a little bit, the, the, the part that acts as the stop when it's folded open so that the angle can be a little bit closer to 90 degrees.
So one of the last things I have to do before I put a finish on this project is I need to mark out where the holes get drilled in the bottom section of the bookshelf. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the flaps um, mounted with the screws in just enough to, to set their locations. And what I'm going to do is take an awl and I'm going to scratch around the inside circle here kind of loosely. I prefer using an awl rather than a pencil because I don't want to get any pencil lead, pencil marks on the flaps because then I have to spend even more time sanding those marks out and I feel like I've spent too much time doing that already. So, so I've got the two circles scribed in there. Let me move the camera so you can get a better view. Alright, so there's one scratched in circle. And there's the other one. So now what I need to do is mark the center of the circle so that I can drill the bigger hole in the bottom piece. So I think the easiest way to do that was just to use LibreCAD to do a quick drawing of concentric circles. And when I cut out this printout to that line right there, I make this little piece, which when I set it inside the scratch circle by eye, then I can go ahead and use my awl again to make a little prick mark where the center of the hole should be drilled. Now granted, this isn't terribly accurate, but that's okay. I think it's accurate enough for what I need to do. All right, so I marked the center of that circle. Let me mark this side and mention that if any of you out there are not aware of LibreCAD, by all means check out my playlist on my channel. I have a whole uh, suite of videos that shows you how to get started with LibreCAD. Alright, so this is the hole saw I'm going to use to drill the two holes. And it's got very aggressive teeth. Hopefully you can see those. I am going to use my battery powered drill and try and cut these holes. So we'll see how it goes. So my battery powered drill actually has a two speed gearbox. That's speed number two, which is the high speed. That's speed number one, which is considerably slower. So given the aggressiveness of the teeth, I'm going to try using speed number one, the slower speed. So I don't cut into my bench. I'm going to prop up my project with these blocks that I made quite a long time ago. I'll uh, reference the video on what I did with those. So you can check that out if you like.
So I will definitely have to do some sanding after cutting those two large holes. The wood is so soft and the teeth in the saw blade are so aggressive that I definitely get some tear out. That's okay, some sanding will take care of that. So some of you might be wondering why there's one size hole on the top side and a larger hole on the bottom side. And that's because I wanted to make it easy to open the flaps when they're closed. So to open them, you just kind of stick your finger in the hole and you can easily fold open the flap because your finger... can wrap around the extra bit here, made possible because the hole on the bottom is a little larger. So that's the whole idea, to try and make it easier to open the flaps when they're closed. So I'm just about done with the woodworking on this project. I did make one design change though that I wanted to mention. When I installed these drywall screws that serve as the pins that these flaps pivot around. I really didn't like the dark color of the screw head against the light color of the wood. So what I did was took another piece of this common board, same materials from the same board, and split it right down the middle using my Japanese pole saw. And that leaves me with two strips that I can glue on the faces of the bookshelf. So what I have left to do is I'm going to do a little bit more planing to make the thickness uniform. Then cut this board, this strip, to length. Of course this one and this one. 
take the flaps off and then apply a finish. And then once the finish is dry, reinstall the flaps and then glue these pieces in place. And then it will be done.